Hey everybody, today we're going to talk to you about the new Tyrant CNC Sig Sauer P365 IntelliFire trigger. This is going to be an upgrade trigger that you can put in the Sig Sauer P365 platform and we're going to show you how to install it today. To start we want to take a look at our IntelliFire trigger. You can see that we have two hex screws that go through this trigger shoe. What we want to do to start off is we're going to unscrew these, just back them out a little bit. We don't want to go too far, but we're going to back them out just a hair. What we're going to do is add a little drop of Loctite to them. So you can see that we've backed those out just a little bit. Now we're going to grab our Loctite, crack this open, got a fresh little bottle here, got some Loctite. We're going to add that to our screws. So you just need a little dab, got a tiny bit there. Get a little dab squirted on there. Go back to our first one, make sure we have that covered. So we got some Loctite add to those screws. Now we're going to set those back down to the bottom, screw them to the bottom. Now that we have that covered, just going to barely wipe the excess. We're going to set this aside for now because now we're going to disassemble our SIG. To get this started, we're going to first remove the magazine, set that aside. Our gun is unloaded, so what we're going to do is lock the slide to the rear. And then from here, you can flip your takedown lever down. And with Sig Sauer handguns, you can just let the slide go forward. And you do not need to pull the trigger. So now we're going to set our slide assembly, the top, off to the side. Now we want to knock out this rear frame pin. So we can see if we can push this out, get this started, get this going. Got that popped out. You can set this aside. And then what you can do is just pry and lift your FCU, the fire control unit, of your Sig Sauer handgun out. Now to get started on this, what we want to do is start removing some of the barriers, some of the pieces out of the way. One well, of the very first things you can do is look to the rear of this FCU and you have this coiled spring here. What we're going to do is take our pick tool and we're going to try and lift and pry this out of the way. So we're going to push and lift this out of that hole. See if this is going to work with us, comply with us here. Get this pulled out. Being a little bit bucky. And there we have it. We got that spring popped loose. We're going to set this spring to the side. Got that out of the way. Next, we can look at moving some of these pieces out of the way here. So what I'm going to do is work on my takedown bar, give this some wiggles. We can actually pop out our slide release, get that out of the way. Then we have our takedown bar. We also have a, another bar here. We're going to try and lift that and our takedown lever out of the way. Just getting stuff out of the way of the trigger that's obstructing what we're actually working on. To help get this bar out, what you can do is lift this pin a little bit here and twist, take this pin and twist and slide to the side. Then you can hopefully lift and get this bar out. We might need to lift it a tiny bit more. And I just plucked and pulled this bar out. We're going to set this aside. Then we're going to take our takedown lever, wiggle this out of the frame. So we're starting to get a lot of the pieces out of the way here. One of the last things we want to do is there's a pin that's holding the factory trigger in. We're going to want to drive that out. If you have a really small Allen key like this, you can push through on this side, push this, roll pin out. We're going to set that to the side. Now you should be able to 
work this bar up and out of the way as well. Swing that out, set that to the side. And now we should be able to lift this factory trigger shoe out of its position. Being a little tight and funky for us. This little silver piece that fell out is something that slides into a channel right here. We're going to put this back. There's a lot of stuff that's going on when you have a SIG FCU, a fire control unit. So now we have our factory trigger removed. That's what that looks like. And what we want to do is set this aside. If we're replacing this, we won't need this. And what we have right here is our IntelliFire trigger for the Sig Sauer P365 platform. There is a roll pin that is going through right here. And what we want to do is grab that factory roll pin and check to make sure it has good fitment. It can free spin, it can move. Your trigger is going to be able to swing, actuate, and act as intended. This is good. I'm going to pull that out. The reason why we want to function test that is because this IntelliFire trigger is something that's CNC machined, it's crafted, it's honed to very tight specific tolerances. That's why this is going to make your trigger feel so much better once you have it completely installed. And with all that being said, this small little roll pin is just a part that's farmed out and sourced from unknown places for Sig Sauer handguns. So the tolerances on this pin are very inconsistent. Our trigger, being CNC machined, it's going to have phenomenal tolerances, but we want to make sure that mates up with the lesser tolerances of this roll pin. You can slide and push this in. Works great. So, now that we have this all set up, we can begin to work on some future pieces. Now to start putting the trigger into our FCU, what we first can do is just drop it into these couple channels here. That's going to line up, swing back and forth nicely. And we want to go over here and grab this piece, have that catch in place. You can hopefully see right there. That's connecting, catching in place. And then we can let this fall down all the way over here. This is all fallen into place correctly. Now the next thing we want to do is put our takedown lever in. There's all these different little trenches and cuts, machined areas, and this right here we're going to need to catch and line up with right here on our FCU. It's going to ride right within that area of that channel. So to put that in, it's going to need to be in the 7 o'clock position. Here you got 6, 3, 9. You just want to be around about 7. Right there. And now that I have that swung into its channel, the next thing we're going to do is put a roll pin back in right there. And drop that in. That's all lined up. We're gonna push that home. Give that a couple wiggles. Give it a little push. Now we're flat. Now we're all the way home. So now that we're this far, we have our takedown lever. This pin is flat. Our intel fire triggers in. We have this bar in as well. Next, we want to get in our slide release here. Get that snuck in underneath there. We're still sitting in our track on this side with our takedown lever. And then we're going to add in our torsion spring. That's this spring back here. We want to slide it in through here. And then what we're going to need to do is get this spring 
compressed and hooked into this hole. So we're going to try our best and get this pushed and moved over here with our little pick. We got it darn close. Now we need that spring to fall in that little hole. So we just want to gently give it a little push and it popped exactly where we need it to be. So we have our torsion spring in, slide releases in place, takedown levers in place. Last thing we need to do is to drop this bar into the FCU. So to get this started to go into here, what we're wanna, gonna wanna do is lift this pin out, but what this pin is hanging on to is your sear right here. So when we move this pin out, we're gonna lift it out so it can give a little bit of room for this to clear. This needs to go behind the sear. That's also the sear right there, that little tip right there. We need this to go behind the sear, so when we lift this pin out, we're gonna pull it out the tiniest bit, still capturing the sear, and then rotate clockwise. So we wanna make sure it's out of the way of what we're about to do here, but we don't wanna lose how we're retaining the sear yet. So I'm gonna use this little pick tool, try and gently lift this up, not too much. I get to a point where I can rotate it clockwise. Gonna wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Now we can get out of the way of this bar. And as we do this, we're gonna set this in behind the sear like we talked about. This is being a little picky, a little bucky. And there it just dropped into place for us. We're gonna rotate our pin back and it popped right in. So now we have this all self-contained. We have this bar in, we have this roll pin in containing our sear we have the Intel Fire trigger in. Last thing we need to do is we need to drop this back into the frame of our pistol, reassemble our gun, and function test this. So what we can do here is slide this in. We shouldn't have any friction, so I want to make sure I'm not catching on like the slide release or anything like that. So that popped into place. What we can do is lift our slide release and then get our takedown lever where it needs to be. Put our frame pin back in. That pushed in real easy for us. Now we can put our slide back on. That is hitting our sear, so I'm gonna push the sear down a little bit. Now we can Rack this all the way to the rear. And we are good to go. Put our mag back in. What we want to do is rack this, make sure that everything's reset. Our gun is already not loaded. We can get a tactile feel for this. It broke. As in it was a clean break of the trigger, it would have went off. Try again. And it is working exactly as you want it to. Significantly less travel, nicer tactile feel, and everything is functioning correctly. So there you have it. You have your Sig Sauer P365 Intellifier trigger installed in what is my P365 XL pistol. This Intellifier trigger will work for all P365 models and variants. And this is something that you can install by yourself with just a little bit of care, doing everything procedurally correct. And this will greatly improve the trigger of your P365 pistol. 
As always, if you need any components for your handguns, rifles, any firearms that you're personally working on, make sure to check out TyrantCNC.com and we'll see you again next time.